Ladies and gentlemen, this is George Burns. The old flu, bu uh, flu bug that's going around got Gracie today, and at the last minute, she couldn't make it to the studio. It was too late to rewrite the script, but a very dear friend of ours has stepped in and offered to read Gracie's lines. She's a very famous and talented movie star. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Jane Wyman. Uh, okay, Janie, from now on, you're Gracie. Take it. Another cup of Maxwell House coffee, George? Sure. Pour me a cup, Gracie. You know, Maxwell House is always good to the last... <laughs> drop. And that drop's good, too. Yes, it's Maxwell House coffee time, starring George Burns and Gracie Allen. With yours truly, Toby Reed, Hans Conrad, Gail Gordon, Henry Blair, Meredith Wilson, and the Maxwell House Orchestra, and Bill Goodwin. For your Christmas night comedy enjoyment, it's George and Gracie. Brought to you with holiday greetings from the makers of Maxwell House Coffee. Always good to the last drop. Well, it's Christmas morning as we look in at the Burns house, and George and Gracie are making their plans for the day. George, let's invite all our friends over this afternoon. Okay, Gracie. I can make some turkey sandwiches and coffee. I, oh, George, we'll have an open house. Swell, and then I'll pass around my cigars. Oh, but, but George, I can't open the house that much. <laughs> Are you inferring that my cigars are strong? Well, remember last Christmas when poor Meredith Wilson smoked one? Yeah. Well, he turned so green, everyone hung, hung tinsel on him. <laughs> well, I'll have Meredith go easy. Uh, who else shall we invite? Well, Dr. Miller's wife is visiting her mother, so let's be sure and invite him, and then Bill Goodwin and Mr. Judson the Texan. Well, do you think a guy with Judson's millions will be happy with turkey sandwiches and my cigars? Oh, he's one man who loves your cigars. He says the cowboys use them in Texas. Really? Yeah. Only he says instead of cutting them up into cigars, they just leave them in one long piece of rope. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Well, let's call on Mr. Judson first. Uh, I think he's at the Ambassador Hotel, isn't he? Yes, he has seven, eight, nine, and ten. He's got four rooms? No, four floors. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, I forgot he's broke. Come, let's go. <laughs> Mr. Judson. Yeah, Merry Christmas. Well, now, the same to you. Did Santa Claus come to see you last night? Yeah, yeah. I reckon by now old Santa's heading back to his home in Texas. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I think the old boy is supposed to live at the North Pole. Santa Claus don't live in Texas? No. Well, now, that sure is mighty unfair. <laughs> unfair? Well, oh, he's so nice to everyone, and look what a dirty deal he got. <laughs> Yes, it was rough on the old boy. Mr. Judson, we'd like for you to come over and spend Christmas with us. Well, now, I'd be delighted. Are, are you sure you want me? Well, if you don't come, we'll be dismayed. <laughs> want us to pick you up later? No, no. Uh, you don't have to bother. I'll drive over in the old bus. What kind do you drive? A regular Greyhound bus. <laughs> you own a Greyhound bus? Yeah, well, now, I, I got on it one day, and the driver didn't have change of a $10,000 bill, so, so I, I bought, bought the bus. bus. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's go over and invite Bill Goodwin, Gracie. See you at the house, Mr. Judson. Yes, and, and don't, don't do anything fancy, Mr. Judson. Just its nice little quiet get-together. Oh, that will be nice. We can sit around and swap yarns. Oh, do you like to knit? <laughs> oh, I like... <laughs> We got you out of bed, Bill. Oh, that's all right, Gracie. I got up at 6 o'clock to look at my stocking. What'd you find? My foot. I forgot to take them off. Right <laughs> Sounds like you had a large evening. Well, you know, Christmas Eve, George. Had to remember all my girls. Well, what'd you give them, Bill? I gave each girl a ring. Really? Yeah, I was on the phone all night. 
<laughs> Generous little kid, you know. Oh, Bill, George and I would like for you to spend Christmas at our house. Can you make it? Oh, sure, Gracie. Count me in. I'll have plenty of my cigars for you to smoke. Count me out. <laughs> oh, but, Bill, we're going to serve Maxwell House coffee. Oh, count me in. And, of course, I'll sing a few songs. Count me out. Count I me know. Out. <laughs> Look, Toto. Yes. If it'll, if, it, if it'll make you happy, I'll sing about Maxwell House coffee. Oh, no, George. Not with your voice. Maxwell House is America's number one coffee. And George is America's number one singer. Maxwell House is loved by millions. And George is loved by millions. Maxwell House has been great since 1885. And George has been okay, great. Okay, okay. <laughs> So you won't come over, huh, Bill? Ah, oh, sure I will, George. I was only kidding. I love to come to your house. There's always something warm and friendly there. Really, Bill? Yeah, and be sure you have a cup of it ready for me. <laughs> oh, the coffee. Yes, yes, I just got it. Well, I'll see you later with it. Got me out. Oh, I wonder if Meredith is at home. Oh, yeah, he's here. I can hear him tootling on that silly flute. Christmas, all. Oh, Happy New Year, all. Oh, we're having open house this afternoon, Meredith. Will you come over? Oh, you bet I will. Can I bring Fifi? Fifi? It's, uh, who threw that at me? <laughs> Who's Fifi? Well, a young lady from Paris, France, with whom I had a date last night. That's who. Is that so? <laughs> what an evening. What'd you do? Well, knowing she was French, I played her some Ravel and Gounod. Oh, I bet those French games are fun. <laughs> uh, Gracie, they're composers. I played Fifi 17 selections on the flute. Yeah? What an evening. <laughs> there was only... I want to say there was only one disturbing element. <laughs> oh, I now and then, Fifi would look at me and say, Kel Jerk. <laughs> and that disturbed you? Yes. I don't understand French, and I was afraid the word Kel might mean something uncomplimentary. Oh, Meredith, it means what? She was saying, what a jerk. Oh, thanks, Gracie. That takes quite a load off my mind. <laughs> Being called a jerk doesn't bother you? Not at all, George. Jerk must be a term of endearment. All my friends call me that. <laughs> well, it's the same as spunky, yes. Yeah. Well... <laughs> Meredith, you're really a case. You played 17 songs on the flute, and you didn't even give Fifi one kiss. Oh, yes, I did, George. The 11th number I played was one kiss from the operetta New Moon. <laughs> uh, be there at 12. The sociable will be over at 11. <laughs> Goodbye, all. Goodbye, all. Oh, George, I'd better hurry home and get things ready for our open house. Okay, Gracie, and I'll go and invite Dr. Miller. <laughs> Why, I'd be delighted to come to your open house, George. Well, swell, Doctor. How about your little son? Oh, Bobby will be quite content to stay home alone. Won't you, Bobby? Indeed I will, Daddy. Anything you say, sir. Say, Doc, you really got the little fellow trained. George, I'm a psychiatrist. Hmm. You know, my wife used to spank him until her hand was blistered and did absolutely no good. Then along I came with a book on child psychology. And that did it, huh? Oh, yes. When I spanked him with that book, he straightened right out. <laughs> Psychology is great if you can lift it. <laughs> Daddy, can I play with my electric train now? Oh, why, of course, son. Huh? George, you're about to witness the practical application of psychology to the choice of a child's Christmas present. What do you mean? The assembling and operating of this train will teach Bobby many valuable lessons. Really? No, yeah, now observe. Putting the tracks together will teach him how to work with his hands. Mm. See the sections of the track, they fit into one another like... Bobby, get your hands off Daddy's putting tracks together. Yes, sir. So I was saying, this teaches him to work with his hands. I can see that. Yeah. I can see that, Doc. Yes. Now, the next step is to put the cars together. Here, Bobby learns the lesson of observation. Which car comes first? I think the engine comes first like this, and then Son, the you want to break things? <laughs> Daddy will put the cars together. Too. Yeah, kid, take it easy. You'll weigh yourself out. <laughs> now I'll start the train. 
And here comes Bobby's lesson in coordination, George. He must figure out which way to throw the switch in order to send the train through the tunnel instead of crashing into those freight cars. Well, that's easy. I just throw the switch this way. Bobby, you please keep your hands off your nice new toy. I'll throw the switch. There. But, Daddy, that's the wrong way. Well, no, your father's a great deal older and wiser than you are, son. I know, but, Daddy... Son, I'm trying to teach you something. Now, pay attention. What's the use? You give a child a nice toy, the first thing he does is break it up. <laughs> yes, yes. Christmas, what a gay, festive holiday it was 50 years ago at the celebrated old Maxwell House Hotel. This was the day when Nashville's famous hostelry outdid itself in bountiful hospitality of the season. Now just listen to this bill of fare. Oysters in champagne, baked opossum, breast of white swan, roast Kentucky coon. These and other savories were served in regal style when Christmas Day came round. But with all the delicacies the old Maxwell House offered... Its coffee was praised the most. A special blend whose rare and satisfying flavor captured the very essence of this joyous season. Today, perhaps, Tennessee opossum and Kentucky coon are forgotten. Picturesque traditions of an earlier Christmas day. But the rich and hospitable spirit they suggest, the spirit of old-fashioned Christmas cheer, lives on and on. This is the heritage of Maxwell House coffee. And it's in this spirit that the makers of Maxwell House... Wish you the very merriest of Christmases and the happiest of New Year's. back to the Burns home with George and Gracie, played by Miss Jane Wyman. Well, George, our guest should be arriving pretty soon. Yeah, you know, Gracie, I wish I had presents hanging on the tree for them. Oh, don't worry about that. A glorious song from you will be their present, Sugar Throat. <laughs> oh, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way, all at fun. <laughs> when you sing, you're the perfect Christmas present. You think so? Oh, everyone thinks so. The other night at that party when you sang, I heard 15 people say that you should be hanging from a tree. <laughs> I'll have to think that one over. As soon as everyone gets here, I'll ask you to sing. Yeah, but uh, be kind of subtle about it, Gracie. Uh, l- lead into it from the conversation. Well, what do you mean? Well, for example, we know that Dr. Miller is going to talk about psychoanalyzing people, so have a lead-in ready off of that. Oh, I get it. If he's talking about his patients, I'll say, Oh, speaking of being crazy, would you like to hear George sing? <laughs> I think we can be more subtle than that. Now, he's sure to talk about dreams, so you say, Speaking of dreams, George sings like one. Oh, George, how brilliant. Oh, well, you're smart enough for two people. I have to be. <laughs> Mr. Judson will talk about Texas, so you say, speaking of glorious Texas, reminds me of my husband's glorious voice. Oh, well, that's easy. No, and, and getting a, a, a music cue for Meredith is even easier. All you have to do is suggest that he play the flute, and he'll blow his brains out. Well, how does that get you to sing? Well, while he's getting his flute out of the case, you quick suggest that I sing first. Oh, yes, yes. I'll say, wait till you've heard George sing, and then blow your brains out. <laughs> You just ask him to play the flute, and I'll take it from there. Quiet. Quiet, everybody. Quiet. Look, let's have some entertainment. 
Uh, Meredith, would you play the flute? Oh, I'd be glad to, Gracie, but I left it at home. Oh, well, that's too bad, Meredith. But we can have some other entertainment. Oh, very well. I'll regale you with stories of Mason City, Iowa. I don't want to be regaled. Every Christmas, Mason City has what is called the Mason City Corn Festival. This is held in Mason City. Well, you'll regale us later. Yes, yes. Well, yes. sir, again and again, I was chosen to represent the spirit of corn. <laughs> they couldn't have made a better choice. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I stood in the center of the stage with my arms outstretched, holding an ear in each hand. Oh, my goodness, that must have stretched them terribly. <laughs> yeah, too bad they didn't snap back. <laughs> Still, they weren't the same ears you see now. Oh, they were ears of corn. And on my shoulders, I had a pumpkin. Well, that's the same one we see now. <laughs> Chris, I'd like to see you in the next room for a moment. Excuse us, folks. Uh, Meredith will never stop talking about Mason City, so you'd better take your cue from Mr. Judson. Remember the one we rigged up for him? Well, you better tell me again. Okay. First, we get him to say something about Texas. Then you say, speaking of glorious Texas reminds me of my husband's glorious voice. How about a song from George? Got it? Got it. So do it. Yeah, there we were. Oh, Mr. Jetson. Yeah, see, little lady, I just had an idea. How, how about a song from George? Oh, speaking of a song from George reminds me of glorious oh, Texas. No. <laughs> glorious Texas is right. Now, you sit down and I'll tell you all about it. Gracie, step in the next room for a moment. <laughs> Why, down there in Texas, we... Well, you certainly <laughs> fix that one up, Gordon. He says, how about a song, and you say that reminds me of Texas. Well, I'm sorry, George. All of a sudden, I just went into reverse. Well, go back to Judson and use the right gear shift. <laughs> Your cue is speaking of glorious Texas. Well, now, don't worry. I'll do it this time. I hope so. And down there, they've got... Oh, Mr. Judson. Oh, yeah, little lady? Is Texas really as glorious as you say it is? Why, it's a paradise. The Texas sky is just as beautiful and blue as your lovely eyes. Oh, speaking of my... Hmm? <laughs> I, I said our sky is as lovely as your eyes. You really think my eyes are lovely? I sure do. Especially speaking of glorious Texas. Oh, speaking of glorious Texas, how about my hair? <laughs> well, that's mighty pretty, too. Like the gold of a Texas sunset. Uh, Gracie. Ever happen to notice my complexion? Yeah, yeah, it's as soft as the petals of a Texas prairie flower. Step in the next room for a moment. <laughs> Again, you messed me up. Things like this wouldn't happen if you were a sane, sensible woman like Janie Wyman. <laughs> oh, now, she's no smarter than I am. Mm, well, this time I'll give my own cue. How? When we go back, you ask me how I used to celebrate Christmas when I was a boy. I'll take it from there. All right. Yeah, you having a good yeah. time, everybody? Oh, sure. oh we sure oh, are. Oh, well, that's yeah. nice. Now, George, George, how did you celebrate Christmas when you were a boy? Well, when I was a boy, I was very poor. But on Christmas Day, we used to get together and I would sing a song that went something like this. Oh, heart of my heart, Say, I love that's you. That's a mighty fine note. Let's get up a quartet and have a little close harmony. Yeah, yeah that's oh, a great idea. Wonderful. Well, okay, okay. That's better than nothing. I'll tell you what I'll sing. I'll sing bass. Uh, I'll sing baritone. I'll sing first tenor. I'll sing second tenor. Well, that's the whole quartet. <laughs> <laughs> what, uh, what'll I do? Why, uh, you hit us a chord on the piano. Oh, no. <laughs> Wilson with Chopin setting up Victor Herbert's toy lamb.
You're doing great. The quartet has sung ten numbers, and I haven't opened my mouth. Oh, well, we're not licked, George. You had a wonderful idea to lead into a song from Dr. Miller's conversation. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's the one where you get him to talk about dreams, and then you say, speaking of dreams, George sings like one. Oh, that's simple. A dummy could handle that. Well, stop handling. Rolling boards, rolling boards, rolling on the square. Rolling on the sidewalk, the streets are everywhere. Rolling on the boards, stack of that. Step knowledge and cane. Look, Gracie has something to ask Dr. Miller. Well, yes, Gracie? I love to hear about your psychiatry cases. Have your patients had any dreams lately? Oh, yes. One of them had a horrible nightmare. Oh, speaking of horrible nightmares, George sings like one. (laughs) Step into the next room for a moment. (laughs) Well, you did it again. Well, I meant to say dream, George, but I opened my mouth and nightmare popped out. That's happened many times in your life. (laughs) Well, we've got one more chance, Bill Goodwin. Oh, but we don't have a cue ready for him. With Bill, you don't need a plan ahead. You just go in there and say that you're going to make Maxwell House coffee. Bill will say, Maxwell House is rich and mellow. Then you say, my voice is rich and mellow, and we're in. Oh, well, that's easy. I just wait for Bill to say that Maxwell House coffee is rich and mellow. Rich and mellow. Right. right. Here we go. go. Oh, uh, uh, Bill. Yes, Gracie? Uh, I'm going to make some Maxwell House coffee. Oh, swell. Well, Well, Bill, what is Maxwell House? Good to the last drop. Oh, what else? Preferred by millions. Oh, say, Gracie, speaking of millions reminds me of this girl I met. Uh, She's the daughter of a Pasadena millionaire. Boy, is she rich and mellow. Oh, but what about Maxwell House? Oh, she loves it. (laughs) She's a smart girl in addition to being rich and mellow. But what about Maxwell House? Gracie, take my song cue from what he says about the girl. Oh, oh. Uh, what did you say about the girl, Bill? Her old man is lousy with money. Oh, <laughs> speaking of lousy, okay, George... Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, you fix that one, too. You want to see me in the next room, huh? <laughs> this time I want to see Meredith. Meredith? Me, George? Yes, step into the next room a minute. Very well. Uh, look, Meredith, maybe you can help me. You're an agreeable sort of a schmo. <laughs> Or, as the French would say, Cal Schmo. <laughs> oui, oui. Yeah. And now, go back there, hit a chord on the piano, and say, how about a song from the talented member of the Burns family, George? Oh, I'll be glad to. Good, let's do it. Yeah, there we go. All right, now, how about a song from that talented member of the Burns family? Yeah. Let's have a song from Gracie. Oh, Gracie. Oh, well, thank you, but, but I'm really not prepared. <laughs> George. Uh, yes, Gracie. You want me to do something? Yes, run, get my music. Ah, <laughs> uh, you don't need music, Gracie. Sing that song you did for us last Christmas when Irish eyes are smiling. Well, all right, Bill. When Irish eyes are smiling. Shoot is like a breath of spring With the lilt of Irish laughter You can hear the angels sing When Irish hearts are happy All the world seems bright and gay but when Irish eyes are smiling, sure they steal your heart away. Say, that was right pretty, little lady. Now sing that song about Texas. Sure, a little bit of heaven fell from out the sky one day. (laughs) That's Irish, Mr. Judson. 
Sing another Irish song, Gracie. Yeah, how about uh, Kathleen Mavorny? Yeah, Roads of Tralee. Lakes of Killarney. Or uh, the Wearing of the Green. Uh, my mother came from Ireland. Would anybody like to hear Cohen owes me $97? <laughs> Cohen owes me ninety-seven dollars. Oh, shut up, George. <laughs> Cohen owes me ninety-seven dollars. Where did George go? If Cohen owes him ninety-seven dollars, he went to collect. <laughs> oh, Bill. George's feelings are hurt, and it's your fault. Every one of you. Well, every one of you? What would you? Well, you wouldn't let him sing. You've broken his heart on Christmas Day. Now he's in there all alone with his little wrinkles filled with tears. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's probably bawling like a fresh weaned calf. <laughs> Let's call him back in and persuade him to sing. Sure, that's the least we can do. Certainly oh, well, thank you. I'll call him. Uh, George, George, everybody wants to hear you sing. Won't you come back? You will. Uh, you really want to hear me, fellas? Yeah, sure, yeah, sure, George. Go ahead. Sing a song. Well, okay, give me a chord, Meredith. <laughs> From time to time in every climb, Isn't blessing... that a beautiful voice? Can you not give him a chance to sing? Go ahead, George. From time to time and every all time. Of you. you don't know good music when you hear it. <laughs> From time to time and oh, every George, time. George, we're really sorry we were so rude. Go ahead. <laughs> From time to time yeah, and yeah, every time. It was right thoughtless of us not to let you sing. Now you go right ahead. <laughs> From... And I just dare anyone to stop you. <laughs> Lay it on us, George. From time to time in every time your heart's been tanned. Are you all through complimenting me? Can I finish my song now? Sure, go ahead. Go ahead. From time to time in every climb, blessings come Hello? from above. Who? To some oh, of Toby. Oh, hey, everybody, it's Toby Reed. Well, Toby Reed, invite him over, Gracie. Yeah, he can sing well, an awful tune. Well, sure. Tony's got a swell voice. Well, that's all the merit. Thank you. Thank you for having a wonderful Christmas party. Yes, everybody's here. Oh, oh, oh Mr. Judson and Dr. Miller and Bill and Meredith. Oh, no, no, don't bother to get out of here. Thursday when we'll all be back. George Burns, Gracie Allen, Bill Goodwin, Meredith Wilson, and the Maxwell House Orchestra, and yours truly, Toby Reed. Now, here are George Burns and Jane Wyman. Janie, I don't know how to thank you. It was just wonderful of you to step in at the last minute and read Gracie's line. Well, it was a pleasure to do it, George, and I hope the old devil flu leaves Gracie real soon. Get up, Gracie, so we can see you New Year's Eve. Good night, Janie, and thanks again. Merry Christmas, everyone. I'll be right home, Cookie. Where do you live, Louise? In all Los Angeles. And what do you eat, Louise? Eat? I eat Jell-O. And from the makers of Jell-O, a merry, merry Christmas to all of you. We hope it's been a day of days with all your Christmas dreams come true, and we hope your tree is alight with joyful candles while the Christmas angel on the top smiles down at the youngsters underneath. Yes, a merry Christmas from Jell-O, 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 Jell-O. 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 Thursday, good night and good luck from the makers of Maxwell House, America's number one preferred brand of coffee. Always good to the last drop. The George Burns and Gracie Allen Show is written by Paul Henning and Keith Fowler. And now, stay tuned in for Noah Webster Says, which follows immediately over most of these days. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.